Good morning to everyone. We will start the hearing number two of the 182 period of sessions that is called Situation of Sexual Reproductive Rights in Bolivia, which has been requested by civil society. I would like to greet the state representatives and civil society organizations. I am Julissa Mantilla, first vice president of the uh, commission, and Flavia Pérezán, second vice president, is here today. Also, ad hoc executive secretary, Maria Claudia Pulido, and special reporter on social, economic, environmental uh, rights, uh, Soledad Garcia Munoz. Before we start, I would like to say that we have a digital tool in the platform, a timer for the parties uh, to see the time we have bilingual interpretation and also subtitles. These public hearings are broadcasted live on uh, different platforms like YouTube and Facebook and Twitter. Please leave your cameras on and turn off your microphones when you are not speaking. We will explain the methodology. First of all, the civil society will start. You will have 20 minutes. You can introduce yourself when it's your turn. And then the state representatives will speak for 20 minutes. The commission will make comments for 20 minutes and then a second round of participation for 12 minutes. Having said that, civil society representatives have the word. Good morning. Thank you. I want to thank you for this opportunity, being part of such an important hearing. I would like to thank the authorities of the state of Bolivia for letting us uh, be here and be part of this hearing. And also, I would like to greet the commissioners. Different uh, nonprofit organizations since to 1998 supporting the right of women to decide their own sexuality, health, and well being so that they don't die uh, of preventable causes. It is an honor to participate in this hearing by considering we have the opportunity to tell you about the situation uh, in terms of sexual and reproductive rights in Bolivia, putting emphasis on this issue. This, I am Marina Morales Lara, and I am with Martin Vidaure, coordinator of uh, policies in IPAS Bolivia. I would like to mention some antecedents to provide some context. In 2009, through referendum, 63.4% of uh, uh, citizens passed the current uh, constitution that establishes in Article 66 that women have and men have the right to enjoy their sexual reproductive rights. And this is uh, le this lacks um, a norm to regulate such rights. For more than 20 years, civil society organizations have been work hard in order to have a legislation that guarantees full enjoyment of sexual and reproductive rights for the population as a whole. But so far, the state of Bolivia has not provided a response to that demand. Based on Article 66 of the Constitution, four bills have been presented regarding sexual and reproductive rights before the plurinational general uh, national assembly but these uh, bills have not been discussed the law that has been passed by the legislative assembly was not approved by the the president at that time. The most important antecedent makes reference to judgment 0206, which resolved in Article 5 to urge the National Legislative Assembly, taking into account that the uh, based on this uh, judgment and taking into account its competences and the recommendations made by the international organizations, 
and in order to progress in terms of women's rights, develop norms to guarantee sexual and reproductive uh, rights, taking into account what has been established in Article 66 of the Constitution, so that this enables uh, the state to solve illegal abortions. The um, special prosecutor decided to declare these phrases illegal once criminal actions have been started and the judicial authorization taking paragraphs three of article 63 of the criminal code determining that abortion is legal only when pregnancy is the result of rape, statutory rape or incest, or when the life of the pregnant women is at risk. It does not require legal authorization or the or a criminal action, just the consent of the pregnant women and the presence of an authorized uh, practitioner. This has not been complied with by the Legislative Assembly. And we will now describe the uh, obstacles that hinder the in legal interu interruption of pregnancy. We would like to highlight some relevant data in the period between 2004 and 2021. IPAS Bolivia has registered 72,000 cases of uh, abortions and more than 500 interruptions of pregnancy in public services. Um, 60, 59% of these cases were due to rape. And when 1.8% were uh, practiced because of uh, the fact that the life of the pregnant women was at risk. These data make reference to uh, children, 11%, and uh, older women, uh, women of legal age, 44%. These data do not coincide with the case of sexual violence that have been reported between 2008 and November 2021, representing more than 7,000 cases of rape, 5,799 cases of statutory rape, and 4,087 cases of statutory rape. The consequences are uh, unwanted pregnancy, and they point out, and we should point out that uh, women resort to illegal um, uh, places uh, instead of resorting to official um, institutions as they uh, suffer ill treatment in those places. The Ministry of Health has informed that since January 2016 until September 2018, 9,552 uh, girls under 14 were pregnant. Specifically, the National System of Health Information reported that in 2018, prenatal attention was uh, given to um, many girls under 15 years of age that were pregnant. 2,500 2, girls were given uh, medical attention, which shows a high level of vulnerability, taking into account that maternal deaths uh, census informed that maternal death for uh, child pregnancy accounts for 14% of these cases. Also, 427 women, girls uh, that were 14 years of age were pregnant. Thank you. In spite of the fact that uh, abortion is legal in the mentioned cases, the access to legal interruption of abortion uh, 
is not guaranteed. These can be seen in the report on the legal interruption of uh, uh, pregnancy and the main obstacles to access health services are created by the same uh, state agencies in charge. The Bolivian police uh, does not uh, provide a copy of the of, of the criminal case and medic mm, different hospitals and health institutions do not grant access to interruption of pregnancy so main obstacles are related to lack of infrastructure equipment supplies and medicine and also the lack of compliance of the period to carry out this procedure that is 24 hours and the requirement of additional uh, paperwork that um, goes against what it has been established by law. This causes a systematic violation of human rights. For example, a right to live a life free of violence and no vi discrimination, dignity, do not suffer abusive treatment for women when it comes to sign their uh, consent, uh, their conscientious consent, and this goes against the different international instruments and treaties. The representatives of religious groups and public officials, health um, staff and third parties interfere constantly so that a legal interruption of pregnancy is not carried out as the case of the Yapakan 11 year old girl. These violates sexual and reproductive rights of women, such as forced pregnancy, abortion considered as a crime, the ill treatment of girls and women that seek uh, health information are forms of violence that may constitute inhumane uh, or degrading treatment. We request the state of Bolivia to approve and pass a legislation for sexual reproductive rights that guarantees legal interruption of pregnancy based on international instruments to update the current legislation, adding health as a possible cause for the termination of pregnancy. To provide official uh, data regarding um, teenage pregnancy for girls under the age of 15 to demand the Ministry of Health to develop process to guarantee the implementation of reports regarding the monthly re, um, notification to comply with general decree 32 regarding violence against women and implement the SEDAD committee recommendation in order to prevent abuse and ill treatment against uh, girls and teenagers that should be at considered uh, as torture. Also, go over criminal code in order to guarantee effective and safe access to legal termination of pregnancy when this causes suffering to the pregnant women or girl and guarantee that women are not do not have to go through any criminal action so that all health services are accessible for all women especially those women in rural areas to comply with the different recommendations made to the Bolivian state that recommend go over current legislation that prohibits abortion so that this also includes physical and psychological health. 
to adopt measures to comply with the report issued by the Inter-American Commission on Human Rights Violence Against uh, Girls, Teenagers, Adolescents and Women in Latin America and the Caribbean in terms of forced pregnancy and of the um, recommendations issued in 2008 in terms of sexual and reproductive rights with a special focus on termination of pregnancy to ask the uh, police to provide a copy of the sexual uh, demand without any obstacles. Highlight that conscientious object objection is personal as not institution. Termination of pregnancy should be health services at all three levels. And finally, pass the protocol for attention of pregnancy in girls under the age of 15 by the Ministry of Health. Thank you. Thank you. If civil society has concluded, I will now give the floor to the representatives of the state for 20 minutes. And I would like to say that the civil society has five more minutes afterwards. Estamos teniendo un problema de audio con el señor Wilfredo Franz. We are unable to hear Mr. Wilfredo. Can you hear me now? Yes, now we can hear you. Okay. First of all, I'm Wilfredo Chavez, uh, General Prosecutor for the State of Bolivia. I would like to greet Julissa Mantilla, First Vice President of the Commission of Human Rights, Flavia Piovesan, Second Vice President of the Commission. We would also like to greet Maria Claudia Pulido, Human Rights Commissioner, Padre Elena Morales, Claudia Peña, who is part of our government, our ambassador, Hector Arce, who is also here, and everyone here on this session. We will speak at this hearing within the framework of the 182nd period of sessions of the Commission on the Violation of Sexual and Reproductive Rights in Bolivia. First of all, um, after greeting uh, commissioners, members of the commission, and the uh, members of the civil society, we believe it's important to say that for Bolivia, it is a great pleasure and an honor to attend these spaces for discussion, in this case, about the situation of uh, sexual and reproductive rights, which is very something that is very important for our country. Today, the state of Bolivia will explain its progress, achievements, and most indicative challenges in terms of sexual and reproductive rights while um, considering its compliance with the protection of the rights of women, adolescents, and uh, girls in Bolivia in accordance with the inter-American system. Now, progresses and achievements uh, in terms of uh, sexual and reproductive rights. The constitutional ruling 206 from 2014 and the technical procedure. Currently, the Bolivian state has one most of the, the one of the most warrantist constitutions in the world in the continent, something that has been acknowledged by many countries in our region because it protects the rights of women of vulnerable populations and of, of populations that have been historically vulnerated. In our constitution, our constitution says that all human rights uh, can enjoy the rights ensured by the constitution without any distinctions. And article 66 establishes reproductive and sexual rights. Uh, from that stemmed this constitutional ruling which declared inconstitutional uh, part of Article 266 of the Criminal Code, 
which led to the application of the criminal code about the legal interruption of pregnancy in uh, non-punishable uh, cases. That is how our uh, court established that victims of rapes will not need uh, legal authorization to access legal abortion. In the case of women whose lives or health are at risk because of their pregnancy, they will only need a medical report. In both cases, the consent of the woman will be uh, necessary as well. These, uh, this uh, is a successful tool against the hurdles uh, when uh, the uh, pregnancy is the result of uh, rape, uh, statutory rape, or if it affects the uh, health of the woman. And after this constitutional ruling, the state adjusted its proceedings. And through a ministry resolution, in 2015, approved a comprehensive attention model for victims of sexual violence. The Ministry of Resolution is from uh, November 24th, 2015. After the passing of these documents, several training sessions were held in the different institutions that are part of the procedure such as the autonomous governments, municipality governments, uh, institutions for children and adolescents. And during 2020, because of the health emergency, these activities were developed virtually. Now, the members of the commission, of the Inter-American Commission, might um, be interested in knowing some things about this technical procedure. Article 12 establishes the requirements for the attention of users who request the interruption of pregnancy, stating that users must, in the case of sexual violence, present a copy of the rape report that was filed, B, in the case the uh, health of a woman is at stake or there are lethal uh, malformations, a medical report will have to be presented. C, uh, the signature of the uh, person undergoing the procedure. And we added this because of the importance of this and the comprehensive model for victims in its protocol establishes that um, the health services where the medical proceedings will be carried out for the illegal interruption of pregnancy, which will have to um, proceed just after receiving these uh, reports or certificates, and no other requirements will be necessary. Now, in the cases where the pregnancy is the result of in incest of uh, or rape or statutory rape. Both documents have to do uh, are a result of this ruling when the woman is the victim of a uh, crime or if the woman's health is at stake. In that case, a medical report will have to be presented. And in both cases, the pregnant person must sign its consent, which is a sine qua non condition for this proceeding to take place. Of course, this must, uh, this, it must be signed willingly without pressure. After that, the interruption should occur 24 hours up after the presentation of the documents. the pregnancy will have to be interrupted as soon as the documents are presented. No other requirements or justifications will be necessary. And this will have to be done within the 24 hours after the request. And we must discuss here about, um, we must discuss a conscientious objection the uh, right to uh, conscientious objection implies 
that health pro healthcare professionals have the lawful possibility to refuse to provide certain services if they consider them against their personal convictions. This is a personal decision, not an institutional decision. Providers who express they cannot perform this procedure, procedure must communicate this immediately to the uh, head of the health services so that the interruption of the pregnancy can still be ensured within 24 hours of its request. The head of service as an authority must ensure the legal interruption of the pregnancy within the 24 hours. The uh, lack of compliance with this has um, criminal or civil responsibility. For example, during the first trimester of 2021, the Ministry for Health and Sports learned of a case in the service of gynecology in a hospital that was identified as conscientious objector. The um, institution was intervened and uh, its healthcare providers and professionals were sent to receive uh, training on this issue. And as the commission must know, the Bolivian state ensures the procedure of legal interruption of pregnancy in the cases that are permitted by the law, thus protecting the women who request this within the framework of their reproductive rights. And the provision of these services in accordance to our regulations is occurs at all levels of care. And it's a clinical emergency. Official data handled by our uh, system um, usually uh, receives updates on the forms so that it in order to have official updated information and the system updated the instruments for information consolidation and we incorporated in the form a monthly report on the provision of services And this has three sub variables, which will be detailed with data recorded at a national level. Between January and September, a total of 94 interruptions were recorded. The variable 24.1 uh, interruption for sexual violence was 48 cases. Number two in uh, danger for the health of the mother had 39 cases and variable Three, uh, in the case of a uh, problem with the fetus, uh, there were several ca seven cases of that. And the state has an obligation to report that the Bolivian police uh, must investigate um, violent cases against women, children, and adolescents after the report is received. And um, the police knows that they must inform victims of their rights. Also, Gessel or Gessel uh, cameras are used to interview children. In case of sexual violence, there will be an investigation. And in the case of children and adolescents, there will be confidentiality and uh, everything will be done at the request of the uh, person doing the reporting. Now, the criminal system of Bolivia uh, contemplated a larger scope in terms of uh, the pregnancy interruptions but because of protests of several social sectors who are conservative and had political agendas, in 2018, the code was annulled. Uh, the state always had the uh, disposition to incorporate 
new mechanism for the practices of the interruption of pregnancies, but it did not have the support of civil society organizations. And in the case, a girl will be naming AS, which required uh, state intervention through a writ of Amparo. This was the first time this happened and uh, protection measures were presented. Uh, and this is all for me. I would like to ask the Ministry for Justice to speak now. Thank you very much. I would like to respectfully greet all the representatives of the Commission and the representatives of the civil society. I think it's important to uh, state that through the Ministry for Health and Sports, public policies were implemented. I will report on them now very briefly because we don't have much time. We have Ministry Resolution 27 from 2005, which approves the technical procedure for the lending of uh, health services within the framework of Resolution 206 from 2014, which is constituted as part of uh, public policy that aims at generating medical practices that uh, provide care and ensure women access to sexual and reproductive health within the framework of their rights. We also have Ministerial Resolution 1508 from 2015, a model for comprehensive care for uh, sexual violence, violence uh, sexual violence crimes on how to a uh, care for victims of sexual violence. Resolution 908 from 2016, sectorial plan for comprehensive development seeks to achieve universal and free and equitable access to healthcare. In 2017, resolution number 72 approved the protocol for prevention, attention, and sanction to all violations to the sexual integrity of children and adolescents. The plan for neonatal and mother uh, mother's health was approved in 2016. We have also generated certain documents that promote the strengthening of the sexual and reproductive rights, like the national regulations, uh, like national regulations and plans for uh, contraception, national regulations for clinical care, national guidelines to care for adolescents, protocols for uh, caring for adolescents, uh, guidelines for health care within the framework of uh, national health care, the national list of essential medications, the guidelines to implement the improvement of the quality of services, the national regulation to characterize the functioning of mother houses, the ministerial resolution number 44 from 2017, which declares 2018 as the year for the vigilance of mother's deaths, or uh, which is a protocol to uh, oversee OBGYN practices. And within those, along those lines, the Ministry for Education has developed a state policy for sexual education and reproductive education. And each year through Ministerial Resolution 008, the uh, Organization for the Prevention of uh, Adolescent Pregnancies works on this issue and implements a chapter called Social Policies in Education. And Ministerial Resolution 864 from 2019 approved the implementation of the uh, protocol for prevention and reception of reports on uh, sexual violence in educational communities. And this oversees all the instruments and there were training programs to the directors of all kinds of units and technicians and five thousand and two hundred persons were trained 
on the enforceability and compliance of the ruling that is the subject of this. Now, we have uh, presented the following instruments as well. Guidelines for the attention of uh, of, um, of pregnancies from 2012. And the objective of this document is to establish the obligation of institutions that are part of cases of sexual violence, in, in particular by um, rape, statutory rape and incest, to ensure the rights of the victims to their health and sexual rights and their right for the adoption of emergency contraception or the legal interruption of the pregnancy. Also, the plurinational plan for the prevention of adolescent pregnancies from 2015 to 2020, which was constituted as an important challenge where we decided to work on public policies aimed at bringing down the high indexes of pregnancies in adolescents to uh, help them in the defense of their reproductive rights. And as the commissioners might see, the Bolivian state has uh, paid attention to the creation of public policies and reproductive rights. Now, based on the plurinational plan for the prevention of adolescent pregnancies and the other obligations I have just presented, we have brought down uh, the index of unplanned pregnancies. And in 2015, there were 82,000 cases of pregnancies and they were they diminished and in 2020 only 20,000 were recorded so the drop was that of 75 percent compared to 2015. the government of bolivia is committed to the respect and protection of adolescents and women and uh, would like to express its commitment to protect uh, this population and to continue in the adoption of a framework for uh, new public policies. I would like to thank the uh, members of the um, uh, representatives of the uh, Bolivian delegation. I would like to greet Mr. Hector Arce. And now I will give the floor to the country rapporteur, the second vice president, Flavia Piovesan, for 20 minutes. Thank you very much. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. It's an honor to be here at this hearing, which is particularly relevant on a topic that is seems to be invisible and has to do with the fate of our girls and adolescents and women, and that involves the their um, sexual and reproductive rights and also public policies, their intimacy, but it is also um, the distinction between the life and the death of many of them. I would like to uh, greet the first vice president, the president of this hearing, of the second hearing of this 182nd period of sessions, our DESCA rapporteur, Soledad Garcia Muñoz, our rapporteur, sorry, no, our um, executive secretary for uh, monitoring and my sister, Margaret, the rapporteur for the rights of women and also the rights of Afro-descendants. I would also like to greet the civil society, in particular, the representatives of IPAS Bolivia, Malena and Martin, and of course, the representatives of the state, Ambassador Arce, and the other representatives from the different ministries. I have three concerns. The first one is that we see, um, we saw a dramatic case that led the commission to adopt, to issue a press release in November, 2021, a dramatic case in the country of an 11 year old girl who was the victim of sexual violence. And the whole controversy that generated on the interruption of pregnancy. Right now, the commission urged Bolivia to comply with its obligation to protect 
women and adolescents and girls from their uh, from sexual violence with a gender approach and also an age approach. I wrote down the numbers presented by the civil society and the state. And these numbers don't match. And the commission has a contextual framework. In our press release, we said that Bolivia records one of the highest rates of uh, adolescent pregnancies in the region, 88 every 100 inhabitants, in according to the UN. And one out of three girls in Bolivia suffers one form of sexual violence. So my main concern is that I would like to know more because I wrote down uh, all the information presented by the state, but I would like to know about the measures to ensure or to warranty compliance with Article 66 of the Bolivian Constitution, which ensures all women girls and adolescents the enjoyment of their sexual and reproductive rights. So I would like to know more about these policies with a differentiated approach, considered especially for girls and adolescents. And all the measures, the existing measures to eliminate the obstacles that prevent their accessing healthcare with an approach also on sexual education and reproductive education the right to timely and full accessible information in terms of reproduction. My second concern, and I remember there was a general recommendation by the uh, CEDAW community, com committee on uh, conscientious objection. We discussed because the state says it's not about uh, institutions, but about individuals. But the thing is that the state has a duty to ensure healthcare, including uh, sexual and reproductive healthcare to all women in accordance with its juridical or legal framework, because these individual decisions affect public policies. So I would like to know more about the regulation of conscientious objection. I wrote, um, I know about Article 9 in the protocol, but what are the effective measures to ensure this policy is complied with? That's preventing the um, weakening of this policy uh, under the justification of personal conscientious freedom. And also the state talked about Article 66 of the, of the Constitution and also a ruling from 2014 that urged the Legislative Assembly to adopt measures to implement the constitutional regulations and the civil society and this is a demand that complies with inter-American standards, especially Articles 1 and 2 of the American Convention, the obligation to respect the rights and the state's duty to adopt all measures to harmonize the local uh, order with conventional obligations. So I would like to know if there is an existing bill on reproductive and sexual rights ensuring the right to the uh, interruption of pregnancy in a safe and timely manner, considering the avoidable deaths of tenths and tenths of women and girls who are usually the, the most vulnerable of them, on, of them. Thank you, Madam President. Thank you, Commissioner. I will especially greet the Rapporteur for the Rights of Women, Margaret May Macaulay, who is here with us today. You have the floor now. Um, good morning, Madam President. Good morning, um, my sister, uh, uh, Commissioner, Second Vice President, um, Fla um, uh, Flavia Provesan, the uh, special uh, um, <laughs> 
special uh, rapporteur on freedom. I'm sorry, I have to apologize about being late. My flight came in so late last night that I didn't get to bed until three o'clock this morning. And so I am <laughs> rather exhausted. And, and um, but I, I could not miss this. First for Bolivia and second for the, the, the persons um, involved who are um, girls, adolescents, and of course, women. And these are young women. And DESCA has its own position that they will stay, say Solidad uh, in, in great detail. I am very concerned um, by, I'm so, and really I'm sorry that I missed the beginning, but I'm very concerned from reading the documents and from what I heard. It's because it seems to me that the state did not engage in full and proper training of the personnel of hospitals and health services. And that is a violation by the state because these people are supposed to deal with particular protections of these uh, of, of the persons we are talking about. And Bolivia has this egregious problem. So the state has to do even more in order to ensure that every single person who is employed in the, the uh, section of the health services and even in the general health services, that they understand every single point of sexual reproductive health and rights of women, girls, and adolescents. First thing, they have to understand the state's responsibility. They have to understand the, what the consequences are for violations. And forgive me if I say this, um, the, 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 the um, uh, a case mentioned by um, um, Senor um, um, Chavez, um, indicates to me that people will not act according to the regulations and so on and the legal, legal provisions that Bolivia has set up. If you do not take a hard line when the breach and say, and, and plead call, uh, um, um, con con conscientious objection, this is supposed to be their personal uh, uh, right and personal uh, feelings that they can state, but they must send that person to someone else immediately. They're not supposed to engage them in conversation against the their, their, their procedure. And when they do breach this, if I, I humbly suggest this to the state, the state must at least take some legal action against them, be it administrative disciplinary action or criminal whichever one um, applies, as the Attorney General, I hope, will, um, Attorney General's office, I hope, will tell us. And, and two, I, do, I, 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 I didn't get clear whether there is sufficient clarity about um, um, the right of a woman to, to, to uh, um, termination of preg pregnancy um, because of her health, which of course must be supported by a medical evidence. But what, what is the process? What, what are, is it one doctor? Is it two doctors who must certify that the, the, preg the continuation of pregnancy for the girl and the mother or adolescent will be um, um, impinged on the person's health? All these details have to be clear and specific. And every single health person must know it and must know, know them all. And I really, um, I, I feel concerned that this is not the case as yet. And I hope the state will proceed to further um, implementation. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Commissioner. I have some comments and questions. Following the line of the comments made by Commissioner Piovesan, I would like to ask if within this policy, thank you to the state for explaining this, 
how do you work in particular the situation of indigenous girls and women? Secondly, we are talking about termination of pregnancy. You mentioned uh, regulation of this, but I also want to highlight prevention of sexual violence because one, these two topics are related, especially for girls and adolescents. And in that sense, I would like to request information. We would like to receive it in terms of a comprehensive sexual education in connection with information about sexual and reproductive health. And how do you work with men, not only with girls, adolescents and women, but also with um, men? and male adolescents. I would like to receive that information. And also one thing are legal obstacles when there's a legislation establishing or there's a judgment or, but we beyond legal difficulties, we have the de facto situation. There's a procedure. So we would like to receive information about training, not only to doctors in charge, but also police officers that have to receive the complaints, but also officials in, that have to uh, administer justice. If that sexual violation, a sexual uh, that rape uh, continues as a criminal action, historically, we know that there's a re-victimization of those women that file a complaint. So I would like to know how you're working in that line. We have some minutes, so I will now give the floor to the special reporters, Medal Garcia Munoz. Thank you, Madam President. I also want to greet. With great empathy, but because we have had the chance of traveling. It's a pleasure to see you once again through the screen. Julissa, Vice President Pirvesan and Commissioner Margaret. I also want to greet the representatives of the estate, the ambassador and the civil society. This topic is of great concern for my mandate as it involves right to health for women and girls, right to comprehensive uh, sexual uh, health. And in that sense, I agree with the, comment, with the comments made by the commissioners. This topic requires a deep uh, transformation, uh, cultural and different training measures that should be part of any action. I took down notes of some data provided by the state a decrease in 75% in the number of pregnancies uh, compared to 2015. That data really caught my attention. Could you provide more, more information about that? And I would like to ask the state, what are the challenges you face for the implementation of these measures, these policies, and your commitment to end uh, sexual violence and the lack of access to safe uh, abortion for girls and women in Bolivia. What are the challenges you face? Because taking into account the case mentioned by Commissioner Piavasan, we were able to monitor how a series of uh, groups put pressure so that the actions of the state are hindered. So I would like to listen more about that from the state and the civil society and also the special rapporteurship would like to know how socioeconomic factors uh, relate to the obstacles faced by girls and women uh, to access sexual and reproductive rights in Bolivia. Thank you. Thank you, rapporteur. We will now start a second round. Now I will give the floor to the civil society. You have 17 minutes now. Well, it's necessary to highlight that the constitutional, the political constitutional of the state, there had been great progress made uh, in terms of normative, uh, take into account our constitution and undoubtedly the Ministry of Health has 
than great efforts in order to have a normative framework to uh, regulate access to uh, legal in, uh, termination of pregnancy, but we are limited regarding the implementation of those uh, norms. And this is a task that has to be carried out at the level of the public health system in order to comply with the legislation so that it can be put in practice when we speak about 508 cases of legal termination of pregnancy. These are not 508 uh, cases, but 508 lives that have been sa uh, saved because of the implementation of these legislation. We should consider the lives of women and how they can be at risk because of some fundamentalist uh, actions and there, some, there is some influence by certain groups in the hospitals that put pressure against sexual and reproductive rights. So what we have to do that is part of our request is to expand the cases uh, that allowed legal uh, termination of pregnancy. If we look at statistics, the number of victims of sexual violence um, or cases in which the life of pregnant women uh, are at risk, and uh, this does not necessarily encompass uh, cases um, described in uh, our legislation. Sometimes women have to interrupt their pregnancy because they have many children, because they have precarious economic situation. And as the legislation does not take those cases into account because the, uh, the well-being uh, state that is the definition of health, biological, social, and psychological. This is not being implemented fully, only physical, uh, uh, and sometimes psychological damage is taken into account. Taking into consideration the fact that the government has uh, is willing to do this, but we need to uh, strengthen uh, this and expand the cases encompassed by law so that this legislation can uh, include other cases that are not considered and if they are dealt with, uh, that is done illegally. But we cannot deny the fact that many progress has been made in terms of legislation for processes in which women should be protected. But we also need a strategy of communication by the Ministry of Health in order to uh, communicate this uh, legislation to the population in, in general. And I also believe that it is very important to create this synergy primary and secondary prevention, so that sexual violence in our country, we are, uh, we have one of the highest, uh, we have, we are a country that suffers a lot of sexual violence. We need to reduce uh, hegemonic masculinities that derive in all kinds of violence in the country. And I think that is very important to deal with that as well. I don't know if Martin would like to add further information. Thank you. I would like to greet the state representatives, the opportunity, the commissioners who have been paying attention to this report. And I want to thank you because the presence of the authorities creates this friendly dialogue by which we can get closer. Sometimes this is very complex because of lack of time, among other issues. 
one of the first things we need to discuss, and we have done that at the beginning of our presentation, is that, in fact, the constitutional adjustment has not been fully complied with because in the in Article 5 establishes that the plurinational legislative assembly has to create a law of sexual and reproductive rights, making emphasis on solving illegal abortion. That's why we are present here today in order to remind the state that the Legislative Assembly seven years ago was urged to pass a law on reproductive and sexual rights. And based on our experience, this should include the uh, termination of pregnancy. We acknowledge and we have been part of the almost all the instruments developed by the state mentioned by the authorities of the uh, special prosecutor office in the ministry of justice and this is something we believe on and we are passionate about something that is very complex and answering your question about the 11 year old girl case it is clear that not all procedures are being implemented we have been a conscientious objection violation to the privacy of the girl and we have identified that authorities do not uh, provide an answer there have been a participation of third parties in this unfortunate case and that is to say religious groups that made the decision and you were saying that um, commissioners and they made the decision by the girl that well, that's why the ambus person's office and the civil society work together with the ambus person so that the court of la paz urge the uh, ministry of health to provide all the or highlight all the instruments that we already know and we would like to thank the commission for expressing their concern about the situation suffered by this 11 year old girl uh, and this case shows what all girls in our country have to go through in terms of obstacles we have mentioned them and legislation has progressed but there are clear obstacles the there are problems related with police officers that do not want to uh, give a copy of the complaint and there is a report about this this is a real obstacle second the conscientious objection uh, this is recognized at a personal level but not an institutional level that's why we also recommend and request the plurinational state a law on sexual and reproductive rights but also the existence of a regulation in terms of conscientious objection taking into account that we will have 11 year old girls uh, going through the same situation and they should have the right to confidentiality and privacy. In terms of the different risks, every woman that has been has suffered sexual violence, every woman whose life and health is at risk, which is contemplated in our legislation, and we are aware of this, we 
cannot make any progress or make this a reality if we continue having lack of infrastructure, equipment, supplies, me medicine, and the uh, respect for that 24-hour period uh, since the request for the termination of pregnancy. There is no relation between abortions Uh, mentioned by Dr. Morales since 2014 and 2021, incomplete abortions and abortions that were legally established. 17 between, from 17,000 to 500 cases. That is to say, the reality is very different from the normative. That's why we not only as IPAS Bolivia, but as part of different instances of organizations working for the rights of women and the legal uh, termination of pregnancy, we would like this to be complied with within the framework of the political constitution of the state. But we would like to highlight the recommendations we have made, such as adapting Recommendation 35 by the CEDO, recent recommendation made last week by the Committee Against Torture from the of the UN to go over criminal code to guarantee uh, free and safe access to the legal uh, termination of pregnancy when causing damage to the life of the uh, pregnant women to guarantee women do not go any uh, do not go through any criminal action and also guarantee that access to the interruption of termination access to termination of pregnancy uh, is something possible for all women especially those in rural areas and something that is very important has to do with health risk. We need to understand health risk in a comprehensive way. This includes a physical and emotional part so that this is taken into account within the legislation. We request, we uh, come here acknowledging that there are progress, there is progress made. We have always respected this since the beginning of our participation and in several spaces, but we consider that these obstacles, uh, lacunes that we identify should be addressed. And this is a unique opportunity for us to eliminate these obstacles and work jointly with the state, hand in hand, civil society and the state, so that we can effectively comply with sexual and reproductive rights, taking into account health risks in a comprehensive way and to create a limitation to a conscientious objection that we understand that institutional conscientious objection occurs in different ways, not only through health suppliers, but uh, through those persons that are part of the chain in order to uh, hinder the termination of pregnancy. That is all. I don't know if Dr. Malena would like to add further information. If, uh, Ms. Malena doesn't have anything else to say. Oh, you do. Sh would you like to speak? No, thank you very much. I think we've said it all. Thanks. Great, thank you. Then uh, the state now has 12 minutes to.
uh, it is impossible to hear him. Oh, now you can hear me, right? Yes. Um, I would like to thank you all for your comments. The state paid attention to everything it has heard and seen, and we will be working on this if we haven't so far. We will do this during 2022, first of all. We would like to talk about the policies with regards to something more complex, which is a conscientious objection. We have developed in our protocol the forms in which um, obstacles can be, be can be manifested. Providers need to communicate this immediately to the head of the service so that they will ensure the termination of the pregnancy during the first 24 hours. This happens in our country. And a couple of weeks ago, we did have a situation, but there was because there was an interference by other uh, stakeholders that are not linked to this regulation. I'm talking about the Catholic Church. Bolivia is a, a secular state, uh, but sometimes it's difficult to make this under be understood by some persons. We have an agile protocol that within 24 hours usually solves this problem and activates the um, termination of the pregnancy within the first 24 hours. This is something we'll be working on. We believe that um, the uh, ombudsperson is working on a project to uh, address this issue. Now, with regards to education, we must say that the Ministry for Education has developed in a sustained manner, a state policy for reproductive and sexual education through a resolution, resolution number one, and each administration incorporates specific mandates for the prevention of unwanted pregnancies and other social problems in educational units. And for 2019, we implemented a chapter called social policies for education, which includes this problem. And through ministerial resolution, a ministerial resolution from 2019, we approved the implementation of a protocol for the uh, reception of reports in terms of psychological and sexual and physical uh, violence in educational institutions. This is applied in sexual viol um, uh, violence cases. And in that case, school authorities must inform the victim about the um, constitutional ruling. I have the protocol here that we published. This is an addition that is launched and updated by the ministry. Now, in 2021, we uh, socialized all the instruments in the protocol. We sent it to all local directors and we reached 5,200 people who received training. And here we focused on the enforceability and compliance with uh, the ruling from 2014. And now we need to measure the impact of those training programs, because of course training is not enough. We need to uh, follow up on the impact of the training that was provided. We hope this will be done in the, in the new report we'll be presenting. We must also say that we have an educational guide for teachers where we see sexual violence, the importance of addressing it, the risk factors and protective factors that must take into account what can be prevented if sexual violence can be prevented, who it can be trusted. Well, we have a comprehensive and clear tool that is easy to work with for 
authorities or those responsible of providing this kind of training to students. So this has been an important va variable, having this tool, this legal and educational tool. Now, in terms of regulation, the ruling is quite clear. Um, we did have a problem when the criminal code was discussed because it defined several documents in term, with regards to abortion. Article 157 of the uh, criminal code we had for some time stated that there will not be a criminal violation when in order to prevent the a risk uh, to the life of pregnant women, an abortion is practiced to protect their health or if uh, malformations in the fetus are um, detected or if the pregnancy is the consequence of uh, rape or incest. So we see that we did have uh, a normative that was even more advanced than the one we currently have. But of course, we need to go back to our work with uh, the civil society and other state organizations to um, comply with the recommendations of the ruling from 2014 with regards to the work that needs to be done to adjust our legislation. We must also say that we are complying, we want to comply with item five of this ruling, but we have a proposal from the Ministry for Justice. This proposal still needs to be shared with the rest of the government following our um, domestic procedure. But of course we have paid attention to this. Now with regards to indigenous women and girls, as you can see, we do have regulations right now. We don't have a specific document for them, but uh, considering your recommendation, we will try to work on one, a specific document beyond the general regulation we have. Finally, we must say that we will we working during 2022 to the uh, fifth recommendation of SEDAO uh, because, um, that will be part of the work of the Ministry for Justice and it reported that they will be incorporating this issue to their work. So right now we can say that the general attention of the state to the issue has been adequate. Of course, as every state, this is an ongoing project of course, if we don't have regional um, regional regulations, so uh, at a regional level, so each country does what it can to implement these policies, and the same happens with our state. That's all I can say uh, for now, Ms. Claudia. Can the state say anything else? Thank you, sir. I would like to provide some information about this uh, question made by the rapporteurs with regards to uh, training and the um, on sessions for the healthcare personnel. We do have a campaign for uh, raising awareness on the specific rule for adolescents. And this year we have held workshops on all nine departments in the country and 385 officials were trained. We had the participation of uh, medical personnel, nursing personnel, administrative personnel, and this includes a uh, gender approach, an approach on uh, reproductive and sexual rights, and the new model for comprehensive and differentiated care for adolescents. During 2019, over 800 people received this training, in 2020, over 800 were trained as well. We also held an international seminar on the week for the prevention of adolescent pregnancy with the support of international communication with over 1,000 officials who were part of this uh, webinar. And also this year, as part of a 
program for children, um, we presented guidelines for the journalistic handling of cases of sexual violence against children and adolescents. The Ministry for Health provides access to contraception. And in 2018, law 1069 was uh, passed, which widens free healthcare in terms of uh, sexual and reproductive health to all women, regardless of their age. Municipality health accounts were created to uh, send aid to the entire country, to all local governments, and this is for healthcare. Now, as part of the prevention work with adolescents, we have a plurinational plan for uh, the uh, prevention of pregnancy in adolescents and youngsters. We are working on a new plan for the prevention of adolescent pregnancy. And on the previous plan in 2015, this plan became a national policy. We shared this plan with the country uh, in over 30 cities of the country. We created platforms for the prevention of uh, pregnancies in adolescents in all the, the departments in the country and training sessions were held on the uh, ruling 206 uh, to the uh, personnel of 123 health institutions. We also created a protocol for the local platforms for the prevention of adolescent pregnancy to uh, give them guidelines on how to work on these issues. I think it's also important to say that the uh, directorate for the, the young has been preparing workshops to talk to the population involved, meaning adolescents and youngsters, because we are trying to listen to their opinion, to their input on this new program. That is all, thank you very much. Sir, would you like to say anything else? I would, can you hear me? Yes. I just wanted to say something on the IB case. Today we received notification uh, that after the observations on the compliance with the ruling, there was only one pending issue linked to healthcare. So the state is trying to comply as much as possible with the decisions of the Inter-American Court. Thank you very much. We are reaching the end of this hearing. The commission would like to receive all the written information, the reports, the data, the research that both parties have presented so we can keep on monitoring this issue. And before we wrap up, I would like to say here publicly at this hearing, which is being broadcasted, um, I would like to thank you for this space and for this dialogue. We know it's a very complex issue and we know and having the civil society and the state's representatives here in this dialogue is something the convention values. And we hope that this is not the end of this dialogue and that the representatives of both parties can continue to exchange their opinions and information. And of course, the commission will all be, will be there for whatever you need. And after the, uh, now that we're finishing with this hearing, apart from thanking the civil society, the state, and my colleagues at the commission, I would like to address specifically girls, adolescents, and women who are watching this hearing or who can see it because of the case of an 11 year old girl that where something was able to be done, there, will, there are many, many others whose rights are violated. So. The fact that we are discussing this at the Inter-American system in a clear manner with commitments is a historical landmark. It's very important. I always say that older women are the young girls who could never speak and who could never denounce. And I would like to address these girls in Bolivia and in the entire region. We are here exchanging and trying to find this protection for uh, the rights your reproductive rights and the Inter-American Commission is fully committed to this. Thank you very much. Have a great day.
Thank you. Bye. Bueno. Gracias.